Welcome to part four of this X570 Pro Art Creator PC build series or review series about this PC. In this episode, we're going to be checking out the DaVinci Resolve live playback performance and lots of different codecs. So if you're a video editor, color grader, something like that, you want to know how good this is in DaVinci Resolve, that's exactly what we're going to be doing. Without no further ado, let's jump right in. Also, I want to mention that if you haven't seen the other parts of this build series, then check out the part one, two, three. We're going to be building this benchmarks and then Premiere Pro. If you're a Premiere Pro user, check out the last video where that's where we're going to test exactly the same things in Premiere Pro. If you want to know how to save some money on this configuration and some of the things I wouldn't change about this, stick around till part five. So let's start with some of the mirrorless camera codecs then. So just a little side note, we are using the timeline resolution of uh, 4K, so it's Ultra HD. Then our playback, we're not using any proxies or any like render cache or nothing like that. So this is purely how we're going to be using this is DaVinci Resolve 17.4.1 as well. So the newest one we can get and uh, let's start. So now this is without any uh, color grade on it at the moment. The timeline performance is pretty good. So this is a uh, 264 4K 30 frames per second 422 and look at that. That's like insanely smooth. Okay, and this is 25 frames per second 422 10-bit from Sony a7S 3 It's pretty good as well, but not as good as the 30 frames one. It's interesting, 25 frames somehow is harder to play back than 30 frames. In fact, it's actually harder to play back than 24 frames as well, which is weird. I don't know what's it to do with 25 frames. So this is 25 frames per second. 422, this is SI codec, so it's a bit less compressed than the previous one, and they all just playback super, super nice. No problem over here. Let's add the color grid and let's see what the situation is over here then. Now we're playing back less codex, but still super snappy timeline. Even at this 25 frames per second, it is choppy, but hey, there we go. Now don't mind my color grading. I just wanted to put something obvious on so that you know what is going on. If you're wondering like what is exactly this color grading, so what type of effects have we got on? So we have got two LUTs and noise reduction on over here. Uh, obviously there's some curves on the second one as well because it just looked too much without the curves on, uh, just looked too weird. So I wanted to make it a little bit more like something that you can actually see, not just like black and white. But honestly, it's it's very, 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 very good. I've got no problem with any of these codecs, these 422, which is quite hard to play back. It's insane. Looking back, like the GPU is doing quite a bit and the CPU, I mean, I'm happy. So now here we have 4K 60 frames per second, and this is 8-bit over here. So let's have a look how well does it play back over here without the color grade, pretty good. Uh, I mean, no problem really. And 422 10-bit as well. This is H.264 still. 60 frames per second, not bad. Let's press play. Let's add the color grade as well. Seems like it's doing quite an all right job. I mean, it's the GPU that's doing quite a bit of the work. CPU is just tagging along, nothing there. The RAM usage is only like 14 gigabytes, which is pretty good as well. Look at that. Let's try H.265 now, okay? So this is a 10 bit 420, H.265. Yep, that's still played back on the GPU. Looks pretty good to me. Uh, this is H.265 24 frames per second and 420 10-bit. This is 422 10-bit H.265. It's not as good, but it's 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 all right. Add the color grade now as well, timeline performance. It's a little bit choppy, but still like very instant and not, not bad at all. Just pressing play, it's very instant. Plays back 24 frames per second. I mean, no problem. Any of the 
these codecs you shouldn't worry about. Let's try Canon C200 RAW over here. This is with the color grade on as well. I mean, look at that. That's insanely smooth. Very, very smooth. Nothing to worry about here. We're gonna press play 24 frames per second. Plays it back, not a problem. I mean, the 3090 has quite a bit of uh, work to do on this one. As you can see, it can't just tag along because DaVinci Resolve really utilizes the GPU, which is very, very good. C200 RAW, look at this. I mean, I've got no issues, no complaints over here. Let's try Red RAW. Okay, it's quite smooth, but it's a little bit choppy, a little bit choppy. So if you press play, no problem. It's not as smooth as on Premiere Pro, this Red RAW codec. It's fine. So 5K playback now. So this is with the color grade on as well. Let's press play. Not bad. Seems like it's doing a good job. It's playing it back. No problem. Plenty of uh, headroom still on the hardware side. Let's look at B-RAW. 6K. 6K B-RAW. Let's press play. No problem. Look at that. Timeline performance is very, very good. I've got no issues here. So far, any of those codecs, 4K, 6K, 5K, it's no problem. Let's try 6K Red Raw. So timeline experience, timeline performance is quite all right at the moment. It's not as smooth as before. That's interesting. This was much faster in Premiere Pro. By the way, in Premiere Pro, we played it back actual 6K. I think at the moment we're playing back 4K because our timeline performance is still on 4K. In Premiere Pro, we're literally playing back the 6K and it was doing a better job than this one over here. So when you press play, it's, it's no problem. But the timeline uh, experience felt a little bit better in Premiere Pro. Let's try color grade as well. Interesting, it's struggling a little bit with the color grade to play back the 6K Red Raw in DaVinci Resolve. This is Canon R5 8K, 30 frames per second, Canon Raw, insane, insane codec, quite a nutcracker. What? Pressing play, no problem at all. Now this is quite interesting over here. Let me see if I can put the, the timeline to 8K. 8K Ultra HD, let me see what it does then. Yeah. Yeah, it's not playing it back like in Premiere Pro. So if we put it to 4K, so that should be about quarter of resolution, then it plays it back no problem like in Premiere Pro. It's easy. Timeline performance. Super, super easy. No problem at all. 8K Red Raw. Let's put it to 8K timeline as well. So let's press play. Okay, let's say color grade off. We're gonna press play. It plays it back quite easily. Yeah, no problem. Kind of smooth. I think Premiere Pro was a bit better. I mean, that's fine. As when we put the color grade on, then it starts to struggle a bit. I think the noise reduction adds quite a bit to this over here. It takes the toll on this system. Yeah, the GPU starts to be the bottleneck, which I've never seen before. But DaVinci Resolve can utilize everything on the GPU, so that's that. If you do he heavy color grading in AK, it's probably a little bit hard on this system. But without the color grade, it's very, very, very good. Let's try 12K as well. This is quarter of resolution, plays back, no problem. Timeline performance, pff, easy, buttery, buttery smooth. Yeah, there we go, color grade on. And our GPU spikes to 100%. Look at that. 
Look at how much dedicated memory are we using. 19.8 gigabytes of GPU memory was used. So in conclusion, what is the timeline performance in here? As you can see, it's pretty amazing at pretty much everything. But over the tests that I have done compared to Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, depends on the timeline resolution what you are playing back because in Premiere Pro basically the timelines that we always had on the test is the native resolution of the clip so the sequence resolution is the same as the clip so if you're testing 4k it's 4k timeline 6k it's 6k timeline 5k it's 5k timeline 8k it's 8k timeline and so on but in here in DaVinci Resolve we have everything here we tested on 4k timeline which means that if we have higher resolution clips it actually like you know plays them back not at full resolution or it isn't as hard for the hardware to play them back which is a tricky way of making everything like you know look very very smooth but in Premiere Pro you'd probably have equal performance if you put like quarter or half the resolution on some of these higher clips then you'd essentially play back the same resolution timeline but hey i'm super happy with this pc uh, how well does it play back as you can see like pretty much anything we can throw at it here even on davinci resolve it does a very very good job so let's have a look at some of the hardware now over here how well does it do so in this room at the moment there's 23.9 degrees and it's pretty much open air test bench because you know there's no side panel on at, on here at the moment and we reach 76 degrees maximum pulled 142 watts from the system i think this is all very very good and look at the gpu over here we pulled 357 watts from this rtx 1390 and uh, the gpu temperatures were 62 degrees and memory was 82 and hotspot was 72 c that's still pretty pretty good i think very awesome system especially because everything is air cooled I am super happy. So in conclusion, it's absolutely fantastic. If you want me to check out some other codecs or include some other codecs in my future testing, let me know in the comment section below or send me an email. All the parts for this PC are linked below if you want to pick up any of these parts of the PC, as well as all the specs if you want to know which components are we using there. So guys, likes if you enjoyed it, subs if you'd like to see more, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.